Hello and welcome to this new video in the Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to continue further again with copy data activity. In the last video, we have seen in several videos different different scenarios on copy data activity. This too is an interesting one. So let me show you the data. Here we are in my container in the data lake inside the data folder, and we have two files which have the same number of columns: ID, name, city, and salary. If you just want to see it. Click on edit. So this has eight rows excluding the header and a similar file, just a different. It has 12, one, 12 rows. So what do we want to do? <coughs> Let's say we want to copy both these files or all of the files in the folder to database. That is nothing new. All you could do is just say wildcard and say star in the source data set and it will take it up. But what we want to do is along with that, there is also an option in the copy data activity to add additional columns. That's what we want to see now. So if I go back to data factory, I'll just clone one of the pipelines that we used. This was to copy data from ADLS to SQL DB pipeline. If I click on this, let me just first rename this seven. And we can name this as additional, add additional columns. Add additional columns. So let us <coughs> have a look at the copy data activity so you will understand. In the source, we had this data set. So what I'll do is create a new data set over here. Clone this data set. Let me name this as all files and I'll browse my container data. This is the location. Okay. And then come back over here. Here, what we'll say wildcard file path in case you know you want all the CSV files. Here, what we can do is we can mention the path name which is nothing but I would uh, write it manually. I think it was data if I'm not wrong. Yeah, my container slash data. So here what I'm doing is instead I'm mentioning the wildcard part instead of the first one, my container slash data and I'm saying pick all the CSV files. Then in the sync, I'll just keep the same SQL DB and point it to new table called employees new. If I go back and refresh, I don't have a table. I dropped it before the start of this video. Now what we want to do, we already know this scenario, but the interesting thing over here is at times you would want the file names also from where you're copying these uh, data sets. So if you scroll down to the source, there is a new thing over here called as additional columns and you click on plus to add a new column. So by default, you'll have some things over here. There is a default variable, inbuilt variable called file path. So here I'll mention the name of the column as file name. And we can all, uh, add a lot of expressions also here. But right now I just want to show you the file path to get started with. This is an inbuilt system variable, which will pick the file name. Whatever these file names are like employees three, employees D and so on. So that's it. And I'll click on debug. Now, what this will do is we originally had four columns <coughs> ID, name, city, and salary. This will add a fifth column, which will have the name of those files from where the data is being copied. So, if I refresh, this is succeeded. Go back over here, refresh, and click on this select top thousand rows. Go to messages, you will see 20 rows. And if you scroll down and see, you will have both employees three and employees D. And to confirm, what you can do is in this query, you just put a where clause where file name is equal to single quotes and say employees3.csv run. 
here you see there were eight rows and for d there were 12 rows if i run again in messages i can see 12 rows so this is also one scenario which could be useful now apart from this what you can do is you can also add many other things in that if i go down and just click on new once again over here if you come you can add a dynamic content which will open up the expression window and there are some lot of functions available and some system variables also sometimes what happens is you would also want to capture some system variables which are readily available like the name of the data factory the pipeline through which this was executed pipeline run id etc so and lot of things over here which you would need so you could add any one of them or you have a lot of functions which we will learn which you can add over here right now i just wanted to to show you but i'm not uh, going to take an example because this again takes us to a lot of different things but just this example or this particular variable is quite useful wherein it is adding a file part so i'll just remove this <coughs> and uh, just generic things uh, uh, about recursively if you click on this if the this is by default check what happens is if you remember when we took the scenario wherein uh, we were mentioning star for wildcard paths what it was doing it was copying all the directories subdirectories everything so recursively means let's say if i am targeting a folder it will copy all the subsequent folders inside it if this is checked if it's not checked or it will only copy at the top root level wherever you have mentioned the path until and if i just come down specifically to copy activity as well if you go to general there is one thing one couple of things is timer so this is the maximum amount of a time an activity can run so default is 7 days so this is days hours minutes and seconds so this is the maximum amount which the activity can run now what you can do is you can also mention the retry attempts if it fails for once you want to try n number of times whatever and between each retry how many seconds you want to wait so 30 40 50 or any seconds that you want to wait you should mention this in second so these are also useful settings so that's what i wanted to show you in this video thanks for watching and stay tuned